And uh, thank you very much for uh, that introduction. And also, I'd like to thank uh, Stop TV for inviting me to this talk, especially Mark Perkins. And um, even though I saw Mark yesterday, I think it's it's fine that we have a little bit late. So uh, I'll uh, I'll start this off. So what I'm going to do actually is uh, give you. Um, a little bit of a, a snippet at the moment of what we're really doing uh, in proteomics research and really trying to identify proteins that we can use for future biomarker tests. So, um, even though, uh, so as we introduced, I'm still not at the Institute of uh, Systems Biology, but just at the Institute. So, <laughs> so I'm going to give you a bit of a, an outline initially just to tell you the goals of our program. So, this, this program uh, has been funded by the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for the last. Uh, uh, 18 uh, to, to 24 months, which we will end at the end of this year. And just to give you a snippet of, of what we've done with uh, public information data and then uh, b built up a resource for um, other proteomics groups to actually take this information that we've also built up in terms of developing assays for uh, essentially every uh, MTV protein. And how do we utilize those in detection of, uh, of potential uh, biomarker candidates for future tests based on, on protein IDs. I'll give you uh, some snippets of, of how we do our identification of proteins and then also look at some um, steps for validation and give you some conclusions at that point. So this is just a, a brief outline of our, of our program. We uh, have uh, some five objectives in which to uh, complete this, uh, this uh, initial foray into looking at what proteins are actually available in uh, patient tissue samples, and what we call our tissues, is whether it be sputum, uh, blood, or uh, urine. And so our program was really built around uh, taking public information data. It really wasn't um, developed to, to try and do a de novo uh, identification um, basis, but really there's enough information out there from, uh, where is this? There's enough information out there in which we can uh, identify proteins that are secreted by MTB, identify proteins that people have seen before by multiple techniques, just by researching on TB. So we, we're very agnostic to the type of, of research protocol that people have used, and just um, developed this list of proteins in which we could detect uh, proteins uh, in any form. And so the second uh, attempt here in, in objective two and three was really then to do what we call selected reaction monitoring. Now this is a um, mass spectrometry technique in which we uh, utilize that information to um, provide molecular-based assays to detect these proteins specifically from one to another, and especially if we look at um, uh, mycobacterium and tuberculosis proteins within a human background. So the complexity is quite high. Uh, and then uh, as we move forward after creating these assays, we then go into objective four and five, which is really measuring those proteins, understanding what limbs of detection, limbs of quantitation are of those proteins with based on these assays in spiked human fluids, and so we use synthetic peptides for this. And now our uh, last objective, which is we've been concentrating on for, for uh, most part of this year, is literally detecting proteins based on uh, human samples. And so just to set the scene as well, to understand our techniques, um, we have uh, two components that we've been building over the last uh, three or four years with uh, um, uh, US NIH grants of developing assays for every human protein, and we've done this. And so this is, gives you the numbers. So as, as we know now of the human proteome, there are about 20,300 proteins. This changes a little bit depending on the, uh, the database and the consensus now of what really is a, a constitutes a protein. But we're around about 20,300 proteins. But if we break these into what we call triptych peptides, these are uh, proteins that get digested by an enzyme called trypsin to give you a neat peptide um, that can distinguish that particular protein. And so we come down to about 440,000 different molecular targets that can identify each one of these proteins. If you look at um, um, mycobacterium tuberculosis, we have some 4,000 proteins. It's a much smaller organism. And so we can distill this down in the same essence we get 52,000 distinct molecular targets that can detect one protein from another in, in uh, MTB. Now we use this technology, which we call uh, selected reaction monitoring, which uses a triple quadrupole mass spectrometer. It's really a two-stage filtered uh, technique. We have a, a quadrupole which detects the uh, molecular mass of that particular peptide. 
it fragments in the second um, quadrupole by selecting only one of those particular masses. And then in the third quadrupole, we only select one of those particular fragments. And it's this quantitative peak that we get back, and that's how we do our quantitation. But you know, starting from a de novo, where do we get all this information? And are all these proteins available for analysis? And so what we've done is uh, use this process in which to create these SRMAXA. So whether we come from some network analysis from, from genomics type um, fields or we do some proteomics, we get these lists of proteins in which we start to create these assays by synthetic peptides. And if you do this iteratively one by one, it can be a fairly laborious uh, process where you start to optimize these conditions. And if that doesn't work, you really have to go back to stage one. And so what we've done with, with our effort is to actually create uh, synthetic peptides for every uh, MTB protein that we've been able to, to um, refine. We've been able to do these highly curated fragmentation databases. We've stored this in a, in a uh, relational database now, which is available online. And you can then query this information, understand all the parameters of how to detect that particular peptide using this mass spectrometry technique, and then download that information in your own laboratories and get to utilize this information as we go through as a readily available resource. So in that sense, we've circumvented this long laborious iterative step now to go directly into identifying any type of marker that you would like and measuring it straight away. And so that's the process that we've done. And this is now a fully publicly available database. And so this is the results that we have, that we have some uh, nearly 98% of the uh, MTB proteins all, all uh, covered by these assays. And so the majority of these, we have greater than five plus assays for every uh, MTB protein. So this is that kind of information. There's some proteins that are really just very short and aren't able to be um, made assays for. So this information, as I said, is, is available. Uh, we published this. As I also noticed there's a copy of those papers uh, out there in the, in the foyer there, so you can take a copy of this, but uh, it's available um, through our website at sromatlas.org, and so you can um, tell your proteomics researchers that they uh, can take this information and, and measure that. And this is the type of information that we get from the, these relational databases. It gives you all of the parameters to uh, identify um, those particular assays. If you click on these icons, you get the fragmentation uh, maps, and each of these fragments is really the sequence of those peptides. But when you take that information put into a mass spectrometer, you get this quantitative peak. And so it shows you on this database what that peak should look like, and it also gives you that information. So it's a readily available resource. Now, how did we use that? And so we now uh, have developed this SRM atlas. We understand these protein lists that, that other researchers have come up with in the past, but have never really gone on to say, well, are these proteins available in, in human tissues? And so we then developed a, a few other pieces of of software which we call the Quant Atlas and Auto, Auto Calib, which is, enables us to do this quantitative profiling. So even though we have the assay, we need to understand how that works in a, in a quantitative uh, manner. And so we've, we've done this to determine our limits of detection and of quantitation. And then we go through and just apply these directly into tissues. And these are, these are uh, samples that we um, obtain from FIND. So these come directly from the field. They get uh, processed either as, as plasma or uh, urine or, or uh, sputum. And then we, we go ahead and measure these in the mass spectrometer. This is just a, an indication of the types of proteins we had in this list. And it really wasn't any particular um, group of proteins that were defined, that one particular um, information component from another. But you can see here that these proteins were fairly uh, varied across the biology of the MTB, involving the you know, growth, uh, and also under hypoxic conditions to understand whether these proteins are also um, expressed in latent versus active components and also secreted proteins. So we had a, a fairly wide range of proteins which we just decided to take forward and measure these as particular assays. And this is the, the process that we take. So we um, have our patient samples. We have different techniques for, for each of these uh, different types of tissues. We um, digest these proteins. Uh, using a number of different uh, uh, techniques here in which we um, obtain these peptides. We fractionate these through a number of, uh, of other techniques. This one here that we describe is what we call off-gel fractionation, which separates the peptides again now by their physical characteristics before it goes into the mass spectrometer. And this is what we measure. And then we do this as a, an automated data analysis approach. 
So some of our analytical challenges, though, is even though we're able to obtain these peaks, we need to understand what is these limited detections, limited quantitation. You can see this is the, a particular assay of a, of a peptide going through at various concentration ranges from very high concentration to low concentration. You can see here that you still get a very high peak when you're looking at, at only uh, 390 um, atomoles of peptide onto the, onto the machine. But when you start to spike this into uh, human tissues, you can start to see, and these are normal tissues at this point, we start to see that there's a lot of background that comes through. So this is where we need to understand how low can we actually measure before we go into patient samples to understand you know, what these assays really mean. And it's, it's this point here we can see that at least with this peptide, even without uh, um, our, our solutions uh, of, of, of human uh, proteins in the background, we still get a very good uh, detection limit of 3 femtomol. We also got to understand that even though we've created these assays, we understand how they fragment in the mass spectrometer, we understand what the limits are, we also then come up with other issues that we get these interfering signals because now we're in a background of some, you know, uh, at least 500,000 different peptides from the human as well as what is in MTB, that we can get these cross-contaminating signals coming through. And so we need to eliminate those and understand which of the fragments can we rely on, which ones are the ones that we can't, and that how we go forward and measure those. And so what I'm showing here is this is the, a native peptide as we start to measure that within, within the solution. We can get rid of this, um, this fragment here and just don't measure that one. And now we get this more specific. And we also have what we call these uh, heavy isotope lo labeled peptides that we dope into the mixture. And so we get this um, quantitative aspect. We also get confirmation because the peptide is exactly the same, that we're looking at the same product. And, and that's what we, we show here, this difference between the light version and the heavy version. And if we overlay that, that now becomes our assay as we move forward. And so we're going to just... Uh, finish off a little bit, I'll just go into what we class as uh, MTB markers. So this is uh, an example um, of one of the markers that we've found so far and just shows you when we look at both the unlabeled version. So this is now detecting that particular protein in a human uh, matrix here. And so this is uh, one particular peptide you see here that we still have some contaminating signals, but by making sure that the retention time and also the other parameters of which we detect those peptides are exactly the same. And this is the uh, isotopically labeled synthetic peptide of that version, that when we overlay that, that we get good correlation of its retention time, we get good correlation of its uh, fragmentation. And if we look at the uh, abundance of each of the different fragments, that they are also the same. So we're very confident now that we're detecting those particular proteins in those uh, uh, samples that we're obtaining from the, from the field and the clinic, and we're able to now say, here are uh, positive identifications of, of, of peptides that represent those proteins, and these are ones that we now class as candidate markers that we move forward into, the, into um, further uh, characterization and, and assay improvement. And so with that, I just want to conclude to say that um, the field is now moving forward. We have now uh, got to a point where we're detecting MTB proteins in clinical um, tissue samples. These are now being, will be then developed further by these assays to get full quantitation to understand how those proteins are being seen across different clinical samples, across different geographical locations as well. And then we can then uh, come up with a list that can detect uh, active uh, TB patients uh, through this uh, type of technology and then set the stage for then moving into other point of care modalities in which we understand the proteins that we've found and then we can now move them into uh, a different point of care test to, to measure these. And so um, we have developed a number of different techniques to, to look at those different types of samples because understanding that both uh, sputum, plasma and urine are completely different types of samples. They all need to be uh, analyzed differently understand how we can fractionate those things and have identified now markets that can be moved forward. And so with that, I'd just like to uh, conclude. Um, again, uh, we were funded by both the Belinda and uh, Bill and Melinda uh, Gates Foundation as well as the NIH. 
and the team both here at, at, at the Institute of Systems Biology that's been developing uh, this work, and also Seattle Biomed with David Sherman and ETH with the Abasol group have been partners in this. And so this information again is available um, for assay development at sramatlas.org. And I thank you very much for your attention.